Hey, this is Kat from Kat's Divinely Designs, and I just want to show you how I design my rosaries and my other designs in my shop, and give you hopefully some tips when you're starting out on your business or, you know, your hobby. Um, I like to actually set my designs up when I receive an order. I pull my orders. I have them all in a organization bin and I have them labeled like this in brown envelopes so they're easy for me to find I have them labeled like that if you can see that I don't know but anyway I pull them out and then this is the one that this is my sample which I go off of because I have so many different designs I have to actually keep samples of what my works look like so I pull them I pull my beads from my um, bead cabinet or shelving I'll show you what that looks like it's a crazy bead thing <laughs> they're all over the place but actually I know where everything is um, anyhow um, I like to start it out and um, I start out from my bottom which is the bottom portion of my beads and I start from there and I start beading them up and I pull every all of my um, eye pins and my jump rings in advance. I have these pre-made, which are the connections. That's a good fast tip. If you want to open your jump rings, which I do, I open a whole batch of jump rings. It's much easier. Um, my suppliers, the the jump rings that I order are closed. They're soldered closed because I like the gauge that they use and um, the, the gauge that they use only come inside closed soldered jump rings they're not open so I have to open them myself which is not a big deal because like I said in 20 minutes I can open maybe 300 <clears throat> by myself so I do that in advance and I have a whole bunch put aside that's a, another tip you might want to do and like I said um, put your connections make those in advance as well use your chain and your jump ring and your lobster claw closure or whatever hook you're going to use you should do that in advance as well it makes this whole process go so much quicker um, I don't like to chintz on any of my supplies that I use so I do only use quality products when I'm making my designs I do, however, find other ways because you're not going to make money on this. This is, I'm telling you right up front, you're not going to make money. If you're looking to make money from this, go somewhere else. This I do out of love for God and spreading his word. And just, I just love making these kind of designs. It's just a personal preference. You can do whatever you want, but I just want to tell you in advance, you're probably not going to make a whole lot of money doing this unless you charge an absolute outrageous rate which I don't think is fair you know that's my personal preference as well but there are other ways to save money like using a cheaper envelope to send your your supplies your orders out in um, look on eBay look on Amazon look anywhere just to find a cheaper sometimes eBay is running wonderful sales you can find these for cheaper um, your your labels that you print your orders on look for those in batches get them in a batch of a thousand if you can and that'll save you a whole lot of money um, I try to look for sales on anything external besides my beads and my designs because I do not like to send out products that look cheap or not handmade and not to my liking now if you don't care about that you can get cheaper beads you can get imitation check beads I don't use imitation check beads at all nor do I um, use um, a cheaper quality of cross for example or any of my charms are not of cheap quality they're all pretty good quality my chains are all sterling silver my clasps are all sterling silver so that's a way that you can you know lessen your costs if that's what you're worried about but I don't do that so um, I'm just offering some examples of how you can save some money and maybe make some more money 
if that's your goal. That really isn't my goal. Um, I'm disabled, so I do this as kind of a way to keep my mental, you know, status alert and just try to overcome my disability as much as I can. So, um, you know, I, I just want to give you a little bit of background about myself. But anyway, moving forward. Um, so the way I do it is I will initially just um, work backwards. I kind of work, you know, from back to front. And then um, very simply, I'm not going to do this whole rosary on video because it'll just be boring and I'm sure you know how to already create a rosary but I use this handy dandy and it's broken <laughs> but it still functions um, the looper you can get this on Amazon I'll link this below this thing is phenomenal I can't I don't have the strength anymore to make my own loops so this has saved me um, and it's wonderful you can get it on Amazon you can get it um, probably eBay I assume and Etsy, which is where my stores are. My stores are on Etsy and eBay. But um, I think Beadsmith might also carry it. I'm not 100% on that, so don't quote me on that one. But this thing is amazing. It makes really nice loops, but they're, cl they're open, which is what I need. I don't know that you can see that, but the, the loop is open. I need that because... When I connect, I need it to be able to close it again. So here's my bottom loop. As I said, I open my jump rings in advance so that I have the ability to just close them as I need them. And I'm sure you know how to close a jump ring, so I'm not even going to go through that. But here is what I was talking about. Here. I like to do this. I like to actually close my own loops because I find that I get a nicer finish that way. I'm just closing my jump ring. You know how to do that, that's basic. But here, I'll bring this a little closer so that you can see what I mean about closing my loops. Here is the loop I made with the loop maker. And then all I'm going to do is just pull it tight and close it tightly enough where it's not going to pull out. That's always my fear that my rosary is going to, because it's hanging from a mirror, it's swinging and swinging and swinging. So my fear is it's going to open and the rosary is just going to collapse and fall all over the place. <laughs> so I don't want that to happen. And I just feel like it, it forms a nicer loop when it's finished. And my loops are always the same size. So I use the looper. It takes a little bit of getting used to, I must admit. And initially I hated this thing. I would never, never, never use it. But as my strength declined, I felt that this was a better option for me because my loops were getting a little wonky on me and they weren't closing properly. So that's just an option that I use. You can use your own loops, you know, make your own loops and close them if you feel that's a better solution for you. But um, I don't, I can't use it anymore. I can't close my own loops anymore. So I do use that. And I really, really love that. And I will, um, link that in the description below as, you, as well and I will link to you where I order my beads it's crystals and BFF um, on Etsy they also have a website they are amazing the quality of their beads cannot be beat the price of their beads cannot be beat um, they don't carry everything but for the majority of beads that I use um, I can order from them and their prices are phenomenal their shipping rate is amazing. They come the next day, maybe the day after. So um, all these beads in this design that I'm doing now today, which is my Italian design with um, an Italian horn, I have gotten all these beads from Crystals and BFF. So I'll link what I can down below. And I just wanted to give you some helpful hints. I hope you like this. 
video and I hope you'll um, hit the like button if you have any questions please feel free to reach out to me I will share my wealth of knowledge which is not a lot but whatever I have I will share with so feel free to reach out all right ciao for now